of faith, hope, and charity. That's the way to live successfully. How do I know the Bible tells me so? Do good to your enemies, and the blessed Lord you'll surely please. How do I know the Bible tells me so? Don't worry about tomorrow, just be real good today. The Lord is right beside you, He'll guide you all the way. Have faith, hope, and charity, that's the way to live successfully. How do I know the Bible tells me so? Good morning. Do I have it turned the wrong way? I might have it turned the wrong way. Nope. There it goes. Or did you do it? <laughs> you did it? Kathy did it. Good morning. Welcome this morning to Benevola. I'm Becky Hine. I'm the lay leader this morning. And Pastor Suzanne is enjoying a weekend away with some girlfriends at the beach. So she she deserves a, a weekend or a week every now and then too. We, I don't have any particular announcements this morning. Does anybody have any announcements that we need to make? It's nice to see all of you here today, and welcome to those that are online as well. Would you stand and join me in the call to worship? Come, rest your spirits in the Lord. And come, hungering and thirsting for God's word. This is the place of peace and hope, where all may be fed and healed. Bring us to the time of healing. Come, place your trust in God, who is always near you. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your word and feel your presence. Our opening hymn is, His Name is Wonderful. You'll find it in page 174. We'll sing just the first verse. be seated. I thought that was a new hymn, but it's not. It is one we know. Yeah. Today, as we come together, we can share our joys, our concerns. Yes. Okay.
So Jackson is playing baseball. Oh, he's the pitcher. Okay. So he out in California representing all of Maryland. Yeah, got a proud grandma here today. That's for sure. Good. Other joys that we have. I'm glad to have our granddaughters with us today. Colette and Sydney. They're getting bigger. <laughs> 10 and 12. Other joys that we have today. I'm sure those of you online have some joys as well. We've not had quite as hot weather. That's been nice too. Concerns that we have? Yes. Dottie's having some carpal tunnel surgery done. Prayers for you. Any other? Yes. Our troops and our shut ins, yes. Yes. Good week for Ag Expo. Yep, they had very good week there. Gail? Jack Eckert is getting a pacemaker at Hopkins tomorrow. Prayers for him. Yes. Okay, so Judy's friend Carolyn, we're going to keep lots of health issues there. Yes. Kathy Sharon, that some Smithsburg churches brought lots of Beaver Creek. Okay. I thought it was Beaver Creek, but she said Smithsburg. So. <laughs> anyway, we had quite a, a large donation this week for food for Katie's Cupboard from other churches, and that was a nice surprise this week. So I noticed today that there aren't any little sticky notes on the thing in the hallway. But any kind of staple that you want to get for Katie's Cupboard is always welcome. So today I found a prayer that is really based on today's scripture that I'd like to read, and it's a prayer for maturity in God's family. Shall we pray? For this cause, I bow my knees to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. May he grant you according to the riches of his glory that you may be strengthened with power through his spirit and in, and in the inward man and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith to the end that you, rooted and grounded in love, may be strengthened to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and height, height and length and depth and to know Christ's love, which surpasses knowledge. May you be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the assembly and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed on us. Today, we pray for those that we've mentioned. Watch over them. Bless them. 
Be near those in need of your care. We thank you, too, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. The the passage this morning is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. It can be found on page 1158 in your pew Bibles. This is actually a prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. Pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, O God. Amen. In our scripture today, Paul talks about kneeling and praying with the Ephesians. He kneels out of humility. He prays for the Jews and the Gentiles alike. He prays that we may be united in the whole family. He prays for inner strength. To recognize that Christ lives in everyone's heart. Having Christ live with us is tied to our faith. Faith. What is faith? It means to trust and depend on something or someone. Sometimes even to trust in something that we don't see or or isn't right with us. So how would growing in trust and dependence on Jesus increase your experience of fellowship with him? What would it look like to trust and depend on him even more than what we do? For me, it means that I'm going to share my joys and concerns with him. I'm going to pray more often. I'm going to go to him and talk to him if I have a decision I need to make. So his main request, it was interesting because if you read this the first couple of verses, they're all one sentence, one kind of run-on sentence that goes on forever. But the first part of it talks about his main request, which is to strengthen, Paul talks of a strengthening in the inner being. It seems to be a prayer that even goes beyond physical strength. Many times our prayers are for requests that are about something physical, and, and that's acceptable. You know, he wants us to pray for those physical needs. But today we're talking about going beyond that and looking even for a spiritual strength, a spiritual strength to live a Christian life. What area of your life are you dealing with right now where you could use some spiritual strengthening, where you might need some some extra encouragement. That spiritual strengthening that he talks about 
is for Christ to dwell in our hearts. God dwells with fellow with followers of Christ through the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Here the picture is not for merely Christian pres- Christ's presence, but the fact that Christ would be at home in our hearts. We would trust him more, and we'd welcome him into our hearts, into our home. Think of a home, the home where you live. What would it look like to have somebody be at home, to have Christ be at home with you, not just on Sunday morning, but every day? Would he be a, a visitor or a guest, or could he really be at home with you in your heart? Can we trust and depend on Christ? Is he our friend? Verse 17 says, I pray that being rooted and established in love, being rooted and established in love, whose love? God's love. God is love, and it's that love that that we want rooted in our hearts. It was God's love that led him to prepare a way for us to be forgiven, for us to be able to relate to him forever. It was God's love that had him bless us with, this every, with every spiritual being blessing. This love is so great that it defies our comprehension. Why does Paul pray that love is our roots, our firm foundation? Because God is love and love is God. How big is that love? In verse 17, or 18 and 19, he says that this love surpasses knowledge. It's a love that's bigger than what we can imagine. If you think about who Christ reached out to when he was here on earth, he reached out to the lowest people. He reached out to the people that were outcast by everybody else talks about a deep love he talks about it being wide and long and high and deep that's how big the love of christ is we are called to be rooted in this kind of love this kind of love that reaches out to the lowest in the world c.s lewis wrote about receiving this kind of love not just hearing it or understanding it, but allowing it to penetrate deep into your soul. Most of us, when we hear about love, we let it cover us, maybe like a coat of paint covers a wall, and yeah, that changes the look. But he said the ultimate goal is to receive the love of God like a dye or a stain that soaks right through us, right to the core of who we are. Think about that analogy. God wants his love to soak into us and to change our inner fiber, our very being. He wants to get into your bones. So will we allow God to fill us completely? Are we rooted in the love of Christ? Are we rooted in Christ's love? On a scale of 1 to 10, of course 10 being the highest, how much do you think God loves you? An awful lot. Are we able to love God as much as he loves us? The last verses in today's scripture talk about what God can do And he does immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. More than we ask or imagine. So he's able to do more. Perhaps we should ask him to fill us and root us in love this week. The kind of love and compassion that helps us to reach out to not only our fellow Christians, but to all people. So this week, let Let's let our roots go down into Christ's love and open our eyes to those around us. Amen.
we are rooted in love. Our offering is, we don't pass the plates, but we can put our offering in the, the plates and we will invite Chuck to come and, and share with us his gift at this time. Abiding love to me the Savior's given. Abiding love for now and evermore. This love is free because a life was given. Abiding love for he our hatred bore. Abiding love, the greatest story ever, can fill each heart if open to his call. So love him now, this love he'll never sever, abiding love from him who's over all. No greater love has ever been commanded than love from him who died to save his friends. So now should we, because this love is granted, Abiding love, for him we can depend. Abiding love, the greatest story ever, can fill each heart if open to his call. So love him now, this love he'll never sever, abiding love from him who's over all. Mighty God, dwell in our hearts. We have brought gifts this morning to give to you. May they be dedicated to the work of caring and compassion throughout our community and throughout the world. Amen. Our closing hymn is one that we do know, Jesus Loves Me. We'll sing verses 1 and 3.
Jesus loves me. Yes, he loves me. He loves you and he loves all of us. Thank you for being here today. Go in peace and know that, that God loves you. Love him and let him fill you this week, I pray. Amen. There's a song of love in my heart. Love is a gift from Jesus. There's a song of love in my heart. Love is a gift from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love in my heart is singing praises. Alleluia. Love is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. 